Hi everybody, Kristen here. Welcome back to the Dally Society. Today, by popular demand, I am bringing you my favorite woven tops from summer this year, the ones that I wore the most, the ones that I've made maybe two or three versions of. I know they're things that you guys are gonna love. They can take you through many different seasons and so not only just summer. I know these are the type of tops that I will make again definitely for next summer as well. So stay with me, I will take you through a little fashion parade. Now, for anybody that's new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell and you will be first on the list to receive my new videos as soon as they are out. If you haven't seen my recent top summer dresses in woven or in knits, I will link those episodes as well so you guys can go back and check through those. And a lot of people were really happy to see uh, the patterns made up on a real body and that normally things that you might put away in your plans to make a lot of patterns you can accumulate over years and put aside and not actually have ever seen them physically made up so i think it's really good to be able to show you the physical version and maybe give you a bit of inspiration so my number one top that i loved from last summer this was actually out probably just on a year ago now and it's the closet case or now closet core patterns it's cello or cello. I love this top. I think the fit of it's fantastic. I've made it in a lovely medium weight linen here and I love the cuff detail and the boxy fit of it. I'll stand back and give you a bit more of a look. The closet case patterns or closet core, I'm going to get used to saying that now. I think they really have put the thought and detail into, especially into this collection, which is the Rome collection. So you'll see the nice deep cuff that's actually sewn down that's got the great bust darts and it gives you a bit more shaping than just a normal boxy top. I think she's put a lot of thought into the yoke detail as well. It gives it a lot of nice structure. So really happy with this. Want to make the long sleeve one with the big uh, puffy sleeve detail. I think that would be gorgeous as well. Now the PDF version in this goes from a size zero to size 30, which is brilliant. The uh, paper pattern I think is zero to 20. So you get a bit more size options in the PDF patterns, but yeah, really happy with the way this fits. And I think it's a sort of yeah, wardrobe staple. You could probably best to have even a, a navy or a black and the cream just for your basics to mix and match back through with your wardrobe. And I think the length of this, I was gonna lengthen it and I decided to wait and see how it was made up. I'm glad I did that because I think it's perfect. The length is just, to the hips, past the hip, and perfect for crop pants or the paper bag waist pants, which is really popular at the moment too. So really happy with this top. And I know a lot of people have loved this, been really popular all over the internet. So you can always look up these patterns on Instagram, look up the hashtags to see all the different versions people have done. So any kind of um, lightweight woven, this is as I say medium weight linen, you can do it in a rayon or in a cotton, even a quilting cotton will work fine. Any kind of drapey fabric as well will give it a different kind of look, but I love that crisp look the linen gives it. So, really happy with it. Back. This is another favorite of mine. I'd been eyeing this off for quite some time. There was a little bit more work involved in this than what I at first thought, mainly because of that beautiful flutter sleeve you'll see that goes all the way down to the waist. A little bit more work in that than uh, just a normal boxy single on top, but I think it's well worth the effort because it gives it a lovely feminine shape. I also like the way they've got side splits. Anything with side splits I really find really flattering, lovely to wear. Yeah, the rayon I think is a lovely drape. So really you can make this up in anything from a rayon to a crepe or a chiffon, um, anything light, drapey, even a tensile would work well. So I'll give you a bit of a look. I love that bib yoke uh, facing. I think it always gives it a nice structure. And it's got the face neckline as well. So size zero to 18, this comes in. And this particularly is lovely made in the dress version as well, which I've seen that done. So I just think that's a really good option, like a shift dress for some of it, a light floaty shift dress. So I'll stand back and give a bit more of a look at that. Turn around, give a bit more of a look at that. Chalk and Notch, one of my favorite pattern companies as well. While I'm on the chalk and notch bandwagon, this is the fringe top. You may have seen the fringe dress, a really popular pattern as well. I've actually made two fringe tops in different fabrics, which one of my favorite tops, one of my favorite makes actually from last year. I thought this was gorgeous. I made it first, this is my 12 version. I made in a cotton linen mix. 
and I love this, uh, particularly love this neckline, the version here, you'll see it's just a really unusual shape, works really well. And I've seen quite a lot of hacks on this top. People have made it into a long maxi dress as well. You guys in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, these tops will be really appealing to you. But us here in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, we're going through winter, we need to layer up at the moment. It's getting pretty chilly. So I'd love to make a longer sleeve version in this to see how it comes up. But I'll give you a bit of a look at the shape of it. It's got that really nice spaced front, the neckline, and the little ruffle at the front and the back. And it's got that little dipped curved hem, I think works really well to give it that nice floaty shape. So this is the cotton linen. I'll show you the next version I've got as well. Size wise, it comes in a size zero to size 24. It also has two different cup sizes, so which is fantastic. A really well drafted pattern and you can see why it's so popular on the internet. Same top, different fabric. Again, the chalk and notch fringe top done with the Different neckline again. There is also the button front curved neckline. See the dress that I've made in this with the button front. It's lovely as well. But I particularly love this version without the buttons. I think it's really unique and special. And there are two different sleeves. You can actually do the sleeve with the little um, tab button here. The, it gives it more of a rouged effect. I think it looks lovely too. But um, the art gallery round, I just think really um, stands out in a simple style like this. But it's much more floaty and drapey. So it's great to see the same top made in two different fabrics and you can really see how it changes the whole style, the whole look you want to go for. And you can really experiment then with your patterns. You can use the same pattern over and over again to get different looks for your wardrobe. So I'd be really interested in making a maxi version of this as well. You may remember my Alice dress from my favorite woven dress patterns from Tazuti Patterns. This is the Alice top version. I've made it here in a lovely voile fabric, really nice and cool and drapey. The kind of thing you want to put on for a really hot day just to feel nice and comfortable, cool and something to breathe in. Size wise, it comes in extra, extra small to extra large. I've made the large and it's got heaps of room, especially around the bust because of the way the um, bib yoke has been designed, the seam comes above the bust. So it gives you that little bit extra room where the gathering has been done. So nice and floaty and drapey. And I love the way the uh, cap sleeve is constructed. It's a bit different to a normal cap sleeve, but it gives it that kind of structured effect that really makes the drapiness of the bottom of the top stand out, I think, really nicely. This is another favourite of mine. I made this two summers ago and I've actually made three versions in this because I love the way it's constructed especially with that deep um, facing on the hem. This is the grain line Hadley top. It comes in four different versions. You can do sleeveless and you can do long sleeve. And so then you can sort of mix and match all those different versions within each other. So I think it comes in a size zero to a size 18. So any kind of light to medium weight wovens work beautifully. This is a cotton linen mix from Spotlight. You'll see it has a seam up the front. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, not sure why they've done that and they haven't just done it on the fold, but I think it works really well to shape the garment and it really accentuates that lovely sort of curved V-neck. It does have a lot of facings and facings on the underarm and a lot of people don't like having to do that, but I must say I love the way, the feel that it gives the garment and the shape that it gives it, especially with the um, hem. You'll see it's got the curved back, the high-low hem, and you'll see that deep facing on the bottom gives it a really nice weighty structure so that when it hangs, it gives that real definite shape. So I'll show you my other version that I've done in this as well, but really happy with this in a cotton linen and worn it a lot as well, especially with like black linen pants for summer. So yeah, really happy with the fit of that. And I think I made the size 14 in this. I'm normally 14 in grain lines patterns, but um, I like the simplicity of her patterns and I also love the little details are added extras so you might wonder why when you're sewing it and you realize when you put it on it works really well this is the other hadley you'll notice it's in a lovely lightweight cotton 
in a beautiful print. I just love this fabric and I really actually wear this with um, some of my winter garments, winter cardigans as well. This is the round neck. It's quite a high round neck, but really different. And the back you'll see on this on the pleat and it's got a little hook and eye. Um, just gives it that little bit of detail as well. So it gives it like more of a drape at the back with that pleat. I'll stand back so you can see exactly what I mean. The high-low curved hem, um, it's very unique. And as I say, the facings around the underarm, I think you could quite easily do a bias binding if you didn't want to do a facing, if that was too much work. But I really think the facing gives it a nice shape. But yeah, I also use a different color facing on the hem because I think sometimes it's nice to get those little added extra details, especially when you see it hanging on the hanger. It, um, I think it really, really adds to the look of the garment and makes it a bit more special. And those little bits of thought of putting to the garment to make it a bit more different. And um, yeah, I love the, love the curved highlight hem. I think that's a real winner for me. This is a free pattern that I know a lot of people love because of the fact that you can scrap bust, you can use all your leftover bits and pieces, mix and match, and put together a wonderful top. Peppermint Patterns Magazine, free patterns of course we love those this is the boxy top or the harvest top it's sort of got two names i think i've seen it for both but yeah it's um a very lovely top on to mix and match with all your fabric leftovers and i've used all my linen off cuts i've made i had a skirt made out of this so i had just that little bit extra leftover and then i've used a different color panel of linen at the back so you always have those extra bits of fabric hanging around and they're not quite enough to do anything with if you really wanted to hang on to them and you didn't want to part with them, I think this is a great style top to be repurposing all those leftover scraps. So this is your Peppermint Magazine free pattern. If you haven't got it, definitely look into downloading it. I put a bit of a wider hem on the bottom. It just sort of gives it a really nice look. And I match the cuff detail to the bottom hem as well. But you can really um, get really creative with this, this style. I'll show you the next one I've made in it as well, my two. So you might remember that from an episode I did on scrap busting. I will link that above for you to revisit the making of this top. This is the other version of the peppermint boxy top. I had a leftover chambray from some pants, leftover sateen that I'd had, I'd made inside a bib of an overall garment and some leftover linen from a dress that I'd made. So I think it works really well if you can mix and match colors that you might have get really bold and creative, anything lying around, try and repurpose it. It really gives you a great sense of satisfaction to be using up all those leftover pieces. And also it's fun to be creative and um, put together a really unique garment. And these are the kind of tops that I get stopped for. People love that um, mix in matching of fabrics and prints. So there's nothing to stop you putting a floral with a check or a stripe um, back with a plane you can really get quite creative with your placement of pattern pieces and put a different cuff if you wanted to highlight that or a different hem band as well um, i love seeing little works of art like this because it's really like wearable art so um really nice top to wear it's the victory tank i love the deep curve neckline on this because normally you see a deep curve it's normally a scoop this is slightly uh, round rounded squared neckline i think it's really unusual the back comes in a little bit so you might need to watch your straps there this probably isn't the best bra for this top but i think it's a fantastic thing to wear in summertime when it's really hot it's got lining as well i think if you wanted to opt for a facing instead you could quite easily do that or even a bias binding but the lining i think really gives it that lovely structure and swing to it this has just got a white uh, cotton foil lining it's a nice cotton linen mix as well so it kind of gives you that little bit of swing and structure but it's it's a beautiful top it's got that lovely drape you could definitely make it in a lighter weight woven like a rayon or a viscose or even a voile as well for summer and with that lining it prevent anything being see-through as well. So really go for something a bit more transparent with that lining. So it gives you the option there. But it has got two cup sizes as well in this. I think it's zero to 24. And there is another option as well to have a little bit of a cutaway piece with the neckline there. It looks great on their website. You can really see the detail in that. 
and it shows you how it looks in a plain versus a print, which I love the look of that as well. You can really use this as quite like a basic in your wardrobe. This is another favorite of mine, the Marilla Walker Maya or Maya top, which is actually in a dress as well. If you buy the pattern, it gives you all the different versions. So you can make the button front version, the midi dress version with a little tie at the waist, or this top in particular is a favorite of mine too. Now on Tazuti, they actually did do a blog post where they've hacked this Marilla Walker pattern and put the added little cuff and it shows you how to do that. So I just think it's great to give you that extra option. But with this, I've decided to go for a little bit of denim piping, which is really easy to do. And I think the facing, I have done in a matching denim as well. So the facing neckline always looks lovely and clean. And this is in a linen cotton from Jocelyn Prest, which is uh, an Aussie designer. You'll see the little cockatoos on here. So really a great basic top with it's got a little side split, a curved side split as well. So. That's always a bonus if, um, if I find a top of the side split, I really love the look of that. This has got to be my most worn, loved make that I actually made last summer and it's the Helen's Closet Ashton Top hugely popular pattern you can see why um, there's two versions one is from with facings and one is with bias binding so it gives you the option for both of those i think it comes up to from a size zero to size 30 so great size inclusivity there that lovely deep hem facing again gives it a great structure and a great weight and also feels good when things have that nice deep hem because it stops things rolling up if they're a bit a little bit more of a lighter weight fabric sometimes you can get that rolling up um, problem that you don't get on a deep based hem so there's no buttons at the back you can see it's nice and simple and that's because the way it's constructed the neckline is just deep enough to get your head through but not too deep and not too high so i think it, it's great when you have to worry about buttons and zips and that kind of thing i've made one for my daughter as well my 12 year old daughter who loves it as well in a little lightweight cotton for summer because the weight the length of it it sits right on your hip bone so it allows you to wear those um, high-waisted pants and showing off the pleats or it also allows you to wear a collot style so it's not too long it's not too short it's just the right length so i've made this in a lightweight denim i think this is a perfect garment for popping back with all your different prints for summer instead of a black or a white or a navy i think the denim like on the lightweight fabric works perfectly so it's a great little basic and yeah, just love the look of it. I would love to hack this into a dress. I think you could quite easily cut it off at the middle there and put a gathered skirt. It just fits beautifully. So this is a size 14 I've used. It's got the darts as well, the shaping, but really happy with the Helen's Closet Ashton. I'll show you my other version too. Now, I forgot to tell you, it does come in two different lengths. So you've got the crop ear length and the mid length, the mid hip length as well, and different bust sizes as well. So how awesome is that? This one I actually made from a dress that I'd salvaged, a vintage style dress that I'd only worn a handful of times. It was a little bit tight on me and I love the fabric, so I thought I'm gonna repurpose it and make a top. And I've loved wearing this as well. So you'll see that's why I've got the seam down the front because I knew I didn't have enough of the fabric. Once the skirt was laid out, I had to put the seam up the middle, but I think it looks fine. I think you can quite easily get away with doing a seam up the front or up the back. Um, yeah, so you can either opt for bias bound arms, neck, uh, or faced, depends on what you really wanted to go for. You'll see on your fabric requirements, if you wanted to go for facings, you might need a bit extra fabric or bias bound necklines and arms, you may need less. And you can always use a pre-made bias binding. It's really totally up to you. Thanks for watching that. My next run through of favorite tops are gonna to be my favorite knit tops. I'm also gonna do a series in bottoms as well. So my favorite summer bottoms being skirts and pants. So trying to let you guys know what things have worked for me and things that I've loved wearing that I've found really easy to sew as well. So if you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. That way it helps people find my channel and I will see you shortly as Will Jeannie. And this is a little nod to my quick changes. I'm a huge Jeannie fan, I love her. So she's my collectible Barbie Jeannie. So, so from me and Jeannie, it's bye for now.